the need to conserve well, the need to use effectively. It's the same principle across all crops. So the idea behind DivSeq is that let's try and set up this mechanism across all crops. DivSeq is about finding this one seed that provides the answer and through crop improvement efforts. It's about seeking out diversity and seeking in diversity. It's a way of really making use of the variation that's been in these collections for decades, but has never been mobilized in any uh, integrated or systematic way. We're interested in using the latest in terms of genomics, um, phenomics, which is our ability to evaluate germplasm genetically and phenotypically, how it responds to a variety of environments, and then to use information resources to empower the breeding community to mobilize that in new varieties to address human need especially for the most vulnerable people. There's been an enormous advances in technology, which has made it very feasible to now sequence a lot of different um, accessions. Now that we're annotating this, these materials with all this genetic data, it becomes really important to put all of them together and be able to go back to accessions and connect genetic variation to the actual seed accessions that they came from. This allows you to pinpoint those characteristics that you want from a particular accession. It makes the discovery of the right diversity more efficient. Has anyone give you the library analogy? You look for a book in a library, and in the old days we used to go through a card catalog, look for the card catalog. Now, what's available? The variation now is accessible. It's readable in some ways and all we're doing now is trying to get those data back so that we can create essentially like a card catalog for a library that had never had a card catalog. People went in the library and just started pulling books off the shelf and now we're able to go and find titles and we're going to be able to get down to paragraphs. You can search for letters, you can search for letter combinations, you can search for words, you can search for word combinations and find just those pieces that we need. So. so it's about making the information that is being gathered available in a way that it is linked to germplasm. And it is about the data being made available in, in a way that it's long term. Further, you come now to the gene bank and you can go to SIP and you can see what I have. We don't tell you what IPK has in Germany. We don't tell you what the Vavilov has in Russia. Part of DivSeq will get these databases talking. By integrating these kinds of data, we're just making this material more characterized. By making it more characterized, we're hoping that we can increase its utility. All of a sudden, you've opened up the world of being able to search and reduce and make more efficient your research program. If you have a part that works well for a particular trait, and you look at uh, the next cultivar over, oftentimes it has almost the same part. But if you go out into nature, you might find a completely new set of parts. And you cross them, and all of a sudden, you see the effects. And you can't predict that, necessarily. There are several examples. We're looking at drought tolerance and salt tolerance, and these stresses are not as predictable as they once were. And so we're, we're having to start to breed in a new way, thinking about not just one type of stress, but the fact that the plant is going to encounter both flooding and drought and sometimes salinity in the same season. And we want the plant to only express the resistance to the stress at the time that it needs to do so, so that it doesn't have a negative impact on its yield. From agricultural point of view, we have just scratched the surface of the variation that we've mobilized in you know, genetic gains. Breeders in the future are going to be able to be more predictive in their testing programs to save time and money and to be able to get new varieties out faster. Why is that important is because in the next 50 years we're going to have to double our agricultural output per hectare. That's an enormous challenge. These initiatives really are for developing food crops that will be climate smart, that will be climate resilient, and that will ensure that we can feed a world population under changing climatic conditions. Essentially, the source of all of this is the gene banks. Because we have the diversity in the gene bank. And as long as we have those gene banks, we will have a lot of raw material for future breeding endeavors. The diversity of genes is so great that we can tackle more or less any conceivable development problem that you can imagine, plus problems that you can't imagine in today's world. And to me, it's sort of like 
having the colors of the rainbow. You know, you can mix and match them. You can create almost any color if you have the essence. So that's what we have is the raw material. And we'll be going about our business trying to create new variation for people to enjoy in the future.